Promicam RG5020 with two axis Harakawa twin seven. Turning on, turn on the isolator. So the machine is two axis. Control comes on with this screen. To start the machine, start the pump and then obviously compress the treadle which is under here bring the bed up with the stop button pressed on the front of the control the control is off and the machine can be used completely manually so you would then adjust your depth of bend so this controls how deep the punch will penetrate into the die this is your tonnage limiter so this normally is set on maximum but this controls or limits the maximum tonnage this is what you use to adjust your bend if you're going to bend manually this switch on the side here is used for stepping on changing from one bend to the next this is your brake for dropping the bed down and locking the bed off with that one so turn on the control we have the pressing mode, we have this screen, this gives a list of options here. First one is manual jog, so if we press 1 and then enter advance, you press run. Now what will happen now is it will now reference, so the back gauge is moving back, depth control is moving to its depth position. jog you can now you see we're on slow jog on the screen here we now press the green button and you see the highlight on the x-axis if I press the green in button here you see the backstop moving in moving out if I press next I can move to the y-axis and I can move the, the y-axis which is this one here. You wouldn't normally use it like this, um, but this is, I'm just showing you how it, how you can use it. So go back to mode, and this is our, our list of operations. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, most of them aren't relevant. The ones that are important is number seven, which is our punch library, and number eight, which is our die library. So number seven, press enter, I'm set to seven, press enter. This brings up our punch library. Our punch library is our top tools. This is our top tool that's in here. And you can see I've got it as selected as number one. So punch number one, 0.6 radius, 66.6 uh, .6 high and 85 degrees, zero offset. So that's the one that we've got programmed in there. So that's that one. Go back to mode. So press mode again to go back to that screen. This screen here. We'll then look at the die library, press 8. This is our die library, so this is our dies here. And this is an 8mm V, and this is a 12mm V. So currently we're in the 8mm V, that's lined up with the punch. I've called that die number 8, die number 12. Easy to remember and safe that way. So you can see on here, we've got die number 8, 8mm, 80mm high, 85 degrees. Die 12, 12 mil, 80 mil high, 85 degrees. Simple. Go back to mode. This is our mode screen. So now we're going to put in a simple program. So we go to job. Basically, we work along these three buttons here job, station, or bend, or new station. So start off with job. We give it a new job number. So I'm going to call it 111. Three ones, enter, press enter, press enter after every input. It then asks us program RAM dimension. We all say no to that one. Then asks us what die we're going to use. So it's die eight. So I press eight and then enter. Punch is one, it's correct. Material thickness, that's what material that we're going to be using. So I'm going to say uh, one mil. 
fit, one mil fit material. Then we've got auto bend all. So auto bend all is really whether you want an inside dimension or an outside dimension. So I'm going to say this is an inside dimension, so I'm going to say auto bend all no. Enter again, completed parts, it's at zero. So if you'd already done five or whatever, you could you could you, you could put five in there if you wanted to and it would count up from there. That's that. So press enter again. That comes up with job programmed. That's our prompt to move to our next button. So we say we've done with job, now we move to stat or station. So this is our first bend or our first station. You see at the top of the screen, station one and our first dimension. So I put in our dimension. So I'm gonna put in 30 mil. So that's 30 mil from the center of the V, come across to our angle and that's saying 180 degrees. I'm gonna change that to 90 degrees, press enter. Bend allowance is at zero, angle adjustment, which we don't know yet until we've bent something, retract time, retract dimension. Come to those later. Station programmed, that's our first bend. If that's all we want to do, we can then press the green run button. We'll go. If we want to add another bend, that's where we press new station. So we go new station, station number two, and it ultimately copies in everything that we've done before. But we're going to change that, we're going to make that one 150 mil and we're going to change that to 135 so an angle of 135 degrees or 45 degrees so everything is taken away from 180 so to put if you want to put in try to put in 45 degrees it would try and bend the metal completely in two which you can't do with this tool lid because it's 80 88 85 degree tool lid. so if you want a 45 degree fold or an open fold, you put in the open angle, which would be 135 in this case. Right, having done that, that's two bends in there. If you want to add another bend, you go new station again. If you're happy with those two, you can just press station. This brings up station list and you can see our two bends. So we've got our first one at 30 mil, our second one at 150 mil, our first angle at 95, 90 degrees, and our second angle at 135 degrees. If we're happy with that, we then press the run button. It says verify the tooling. Is the tooling correct? Yes, it is correct. Press run again. Backstop comes into position. And we're ready to go. Do one fold, it will step on and it will change step when it triggers that switch there. To make it go to the next bend without using the switch, if I press the run button again, See, we've got auto here. Press the run button again. We now get single. If I now press enter, we can now step it between the two. And when the press is running and you've got it in auto by pressing the run button again, and the press goes up and down, it will automatically step between those two folds. So let's say you do your first fold and you measure your angle and it's, it's, not, it's nine, not 90 degrees. So let's say it's an open fold. So we go back to our station. So we're on station one, so I press station again, you see, to get to there. Okay, station one, enter. Okay, come along to our angle adjustment, which is here. You can see angle adjustment here. So let's say our fold is underfolded, in other words, it's not coming up square enough. And let's say we measure it and it's five degrees underfolded. Then what we do is we put in five and then a minus, very important. So that will then adjust our position by five degrees on that angle. Let's say we were overfolded. So if I just clear that, if we were overfolded, so if it was bending too much and you measure the angle and let's say it's overfolding by three degrees, you would just put in a positive three, no minus. So if it overfolds, you put in a positive value. If it underfolds, you put in a negative value until you get it right. You do the fold again and then adjust to suit. A good way to check to see if everything is as it should be is program 180 degrees with no corrections and it should nicely clamp the material. 
if that doesn't work, if that's not clamping it enough or not uh, not touching the metal at all, then you would need to change your die height. Either increase or reduce the height of your, you know, only by small amounts. So is it 80 mil, so make it say 80.5 or 79.8 or whichever way you need to go until you get that clamping point correct. Once you've got it correct, then the rest of the angle should come out fine. The backstop is set up such that that will give us 30 mil from the center of the V to the to the back bar, which is here. If at any time you want to stop it, you just press the red stop button. This turns the display off and puts it in safe mode. The machine can still be used manually and will operate up and down uh, manually and using the depth control. Now, <clears throat> to go back to our program again, if we wanted to run that, we just press the run button. If we wanted to then go back to our job, press job, press job again, we get our job list. You see we've got two in there, job number one and job number 111, which one I just put in. If we wanted to get rid of a job, so we just select, say, right, I'll get rid of job one, so let's just select one on here and then delete. And it's now it's deleted it. If we want to add a new job, just give it a new job number, say job number two, and then enter. And then it asks us all those questions again. So we just carry on through. So program round dimension no. Die is number eight. Punch is number one. Material thickness, we'll say 1.5, etc. Auto bend all. Inside or outside dimensions that means. So if we say yes, that will give us an outside dimension. Enter again. And then we go to station. Put in our dimension let's say um, 25, our angle of 90 degrees, okay, enter, 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 enter. Station programmed, if we now press run, that will come straight to that position. You can see now it's put a bend allowance and it's taking it off, so that will take off and give us a 25 mil outside fold. And that is basically uh, it as far as programming the control is concerned. Um, the only other thing I'm showing you is the retraction. So if we go station, we've got a retract time and a retract dimension. So a retract time is a delay, so it will stop the back gauge from then coming in. So you put in two seconds in there, it won't come in for two seconds or three seconds or four seconds, it'll wait. And the retract dimension is how far back it will retract from that position. So if you put in 10 mil in there, it'll retract 10 mil from there, so it'll go out to 35, etc. Um, quite a useful feature, but not, not an essential, essential feature. Quite useful. Um, if in doubt, always press mode, go back to this screen. Um, on here, just quickly go through these. So number two is axis calibration. So if I press two, enter. This shows us the positions of the motors when they're calibrated to make it recalibrate. Press clear, recalibrate again. Serial communication is not used, that's for communication with the computer, but no one's got the software anymore for these and you won't have a cable to connect it up. Master clear will clear all the programs. Master save saves everything, so I'll do that now. Five, enter. So that will save everything that's in there, all parameters and everything. Number six is configuration menu, so number six, enter. So this just, whether you want it in metric, language type, always leave it in English. Um, audio beeper disabled, everything else is as it should be, and left that way. So leave it alone, don't play with it. Okay, uh, punch and dial library we've done. Number nine, Y-axis mode. So what you can do, if you just want to use the backstop, and you don't want to program the angles, you just want to do the, the angles manually, you can go nine, enter, nine, enter again, until you get standby manual. Now what will happen is the y-axis is now not controlled, but the back gauge is. So the back gauge will come to position, you see it's got standby manual, and you can manually adjust your depth on here. So the more, 
in you go so in other words the lesser values on here the the lower the bed will go so in other words the bed the, the angle will be will be less so the further out you go the more the bed will come up into the tooling so that's something that you, know, you will get used to um, and you can adjust so you can do it by winding it in put your foot on the treadle bring the bed up keeping your foot on the treadle and then adjust with your foot down on the treadle adjust this and you can see then the bed moving up and down until you get it to the position you want so that is another way of using it um, quite a simple way of using it so there we go um, this is me uh, if you need to any information um, always ring the mobile number and I will do my best to help you as much as I can okay hope that's useful to get it back out of standby manual go back to mode go nine enter and you're back to active press run and then that will recalibrate which it does these are a good system they've been around a long time they're reliable you can still get most of the spares for them um, and they're very accurate and they work very very well and they complement the machine very nicely there we go. Thank you.